guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's have some super simple paper crafting fun. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone. I am so glad that you decided to spend some of your day with me and I really want to send a special thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee and everyone who is a part of my monthly members group because you guys are going way above and beyond to help me keep this channel running at the level all of y'all have come to expect. And I just want to let you know how appreciative and grateful I am for all of your generosity. Thank you so much. Well, I think this bag sort of sums it up. It says gorgeous, and this is what we're going to be making today. And you know what's special about this bag? We're not going to need a scoreboard. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do it. It is going to be so easy. But y'all, look at this bag. Look at how wide it opens and I'm just going to take out a few things that I have on the inside of this bag and basically I just have some stickers on the inside and for those of you who might be doing craft fairs or you might have a present somewhere else and you want special packaging this is going to be a super simple way to get some really cute packaging for items such as this it's so easy so simple so y'all know what time it is it's time to make it all right, y'all, so here is a closer look at the bag that we're going to be making today. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? When finished, my bag measures 10 and a half inches across, but is 13 and three quarters of an inch tall. It's a big one, y'all, so we can get a lot of goodies in this bag. Because it's meant to flare, and you can see just how much room we have on the inside, and as I said before, I filled mine with just a whole bunch of my little sticker packs, and I can get even more in here because this bag will expand to hold even more. So I'm going to take those out. And again, we're going to be using wrapping paper, but we don't need a scoreboard. And so here is the wrapping paper that I'm going to be using. And I got this wrapping paper at the Dollar Tree. Some of their wrapping paper can be very flimsy, but this one is actually a good quality wrapping paper. It has the grid marks in it, and that makes it very easy for me to be able to use this. So what I need to start on my project is I need to measure 18 inches. And I see that my 18 inch mark is right here at this grid mark. So all I need to do at this point is just take my ruler, place it on the grid, and then I'm just going to let my ruler be my trimmer. So I am just trimming down and complete my tear. So once we trim away, we are going to have a piece that is 18 by 30 because the width of my roll is 30 inches long. So I took off an 18 inch piece. So I'm starting with 18 by 30. Then I'm going to just take this and we are very simply going to just match it up end to end and when you have it matched or as close as you can get it we're simply going to crease across now I want to make sure that I come to this end as well and match so once we've matched it end to end we can just take our hand and smooth out our crease. Now the one thing about this project and the one thing about any um, handcrafted project that you do, it is not going to be perfect, but it will be very close to it. And so if you do have it off just a little bit, please don't let that stress you because it is not worth the aggravation of letting it stress you. It will be okay if it's off just a little bit. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to open it. I'm going to take one of the tops and I'm going to fold it down, bring in my ruler, and I can see that I fold it this side one and one eighth of an inch. So that is what I'm going for. And I can follow that grid mark across and just make sure I have everything lined up with the grid. Let's go ahead and get that 
nice and crisp. Then we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take this in. We're going to fold it over. I'll bring in my ruler and I want to make sure that I have it about the same size as the other one. And when I think I'm pretty close, I'll just go ahead and start creasing across. And so to have this out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and tape down these two overhangs that I put on. So I'm just going to use my tape and I'll place my tape all the way across. And this is just going to make it easier to be able to handle such a large piece and try to get everything as close as you possibly can. So I'll peel away this tape backer And then I'm going to take this piece and just fold it over, go ahead and get it stuck down. Then I'm going to rotate to the opposite end and do the same thing. So I'm going to take my tape and I'm putting tape right in here. trim away and we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it over and so now we have a finished edge to the top of our bag and if you notice at this point that your tops aren't meeting and mine aren't just go ahead and pull them up and recrease it. And that way, again, we are as close as possible. All right, so once we have it pretty even here at the top and we've created the new crease at the bottom to make sure that it's even, then we're going to open it. And you can see that we have the finished top and the finished top on this side as well. So now we're going to take it and I am just going to take my ruler because the ruler is about an inch wide. So I'm going to place my ruler right there on the edge and then I'm just going to bring it up so that I can get a little crease. So I'll take my finger and I'm just going to press and you can see that I have a little crease there. So I'll take that crease and I'm just going to fold over on that crease, coming all the way down. And like I said, this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. So then once I think that I have it straight enough, I am just going to make sure I do a hard crease. And then I'm going to take this, flip it over this way, and then I'll just start using what I've already creased as my guide. So this will be the second time that I fold. And I'm just creasing and I'll just crease on this end as well. And then once I have that crease, I'm going to flip it over and we'll do it one more time. So we're actually going to put in three folds.
And again, we aren't using a scoreboard, guys, so exact measurements you won't get, but if you take your time, you'll get it pretty close. So now that we have it like this, we have one side done, so I'll flip it to this side and we're going to repeat that process. So I'm going to take my ruler, place my ruler down, place it all the way towards the edge, lift up and crease. You can see my crease right there. I'll take this piece and I'm going to crease. I'll take this piece and we'll fold it over and we'll crease. Now if you think that you might have gone off any, you can always take your ruler, place your ruler down, and just go from end to end placing that ruler to see how close you have it. So there's one, we're going to take it, flip it over, and then we'll use that first crease that we did as the guide for the second crease that we'll need to do. So I'm just folding it over. And I'm creasing. And y'all can see that I am not using my scoreboard at all. So I'm not letting the fact that I am not using exact scores deter me from doing this project at all. It's not frustrating me. I know that I might be off a little bit and I'm okay with that. So now we're going to flip it over and we'll do that last one. So now we have three folds on both sides. What we need to do is on one half, we're going to remove one of these outside folds. So I have cut straight through right there. I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to trim. I really need to change my blade. But I'm just going to trim all the way down. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around to the other side and do the same thing. So I'll go in at that halfway point and just cut that piece. And then I'll just remove this piece. And I'm just going to use my finger blade to trim out. Okay, so once we have these ends trimmed off, we're ready to put it together. So I am just going to take it, and this will be my glue flap on this end. So I'll be taking this and I'm just going to fold it over and match it to that glue flap on both ends. And that is how we're going to get our bag. So I'm going to take my glue, place my glue on this glue flap And then I'm going to bring that first half up, fold it over, and get this match. So I'm matching top to top, and then I can work my way down. So it really is pretty simple. So once you get that glue on there, you can go ahead and just close that and get it nice and stuck. We'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to place my glue on the glue flap. Then I'm going to take these two pieces and match them top to top. Then I can just take it, go down the side and get it nice and stuck. And then you can just take your bag 
and give it a nice crease from top to bottom. And so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut an opening. On this one, I used my punch. And this punch, I believe, is from Tuesday morning. It'll cut through these two pieces very easily. But if you don't have an oval punch, I am going to show you a way to get a nice little opening in your bag without needing a punch. So I have this two by four piece of scrap chipboard. I'm just going to stick some tape on the back and I'm going to place this down wherever I want that opening. And let me see if I've got it nice and straight or as straight as I can get it. And now that I have it like that, I am just going to hold this down so that I can cut through both parts of my bag. So I am just going to trim, turn it, trim, turn it, trim, and then I'll trim out my final piece. So now you can see I have a nice little handle in this bag that I can use to carry it if I want to. Or if you want to use your punch to get a smaller handle, you can. But this certainly gives you options for being able to make sure that you can carry this bag if you wanted to carry it like this. So then on this bag, I finished it off with a little Dollar Tree sticker that says, I've never seen you looking so gorgeous. And you don't have to put anything on your bag, but I just thought I'd put a little saying on mine. And here is the flip side of that sticker. So that looking so gorgeous sticker was on this side. And on this side, we have looking good. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, take this looking good sticker, and I'm just going to put it down just to put a little message on my bag. Now this isn't anything that you have to do, but I think I'm just gonna finish this bag off just like this. And I think it's looking good. So there we have our very easy to make 10 and a half by 13 and three quarter inch bag that is able to be opened to place a lot of items in it. So like I said, for those of you who might be doing craft fairs or if you're selling your items anywhere and you want to create some really fun bags, this is a very easy way. And it's also a very economical way because if you take a roll of wrapping paper, you can make so many of these bags in different sizes to use to present anything that you might be selling. Plus, if you want to add some stickers, Dollar Tree has wonderful stickers, or if you don't have a Dollar Tree because you're not in the US, I'm sure you have a thrift store or a pound penny or something like that where they sell items similar to this at a very low cost. So for me, I used a roll of wrapping paper that cost me a dollar, and I used a pack of stickers that cost me a dollar. So I'm estimating that I'm able to make the two bags alone for about 25 cents. Then when I add in the stickers that were optional, I'm still able to make this complete set for $1.25. So that is really some very economical crafting. Guys, I hope that you have liked this fun, quick and easy way to make a bag without a scoreboard and without any extra equipment needed. If you have found this video likable and helpful, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.